If you've ever driven off the main road to avoid cops or whatever, and you've probably gone by an old farmhouse and had some frantic dog come chasing after your vehicle, then you start slowing down or swerving all over the place. That just gives the dog confidence. He thinks he's winning. Well, here's a simple trick to help you avoid the whole situation. Just take a piece of copper pipe and stick it into a toy dog out the back of your vehicle. It's that simple. Just make sure you stick it into the right end. Another dog, see that fake dog bouncing along behind your vehicle, they'll think, oh boy, I can relax for a change. This one's covered. Actually, just had a brush with death. I don't mean my wife find out how much I spend on fishing gear either. I'm, I'm talking about the real thing. Dalton and I pull into the parking lot, and I hear this loud crack. I jump out just as a maple tree crashes right through the roof of the possum van. Oh boy. Telling you, Red, somebody up there was looking out for you. Well, whoever's looking out for you needs glasses, Dalton. <laughs> Dalton was bent over trying to pick a nickel up off the floor. <laughs> How are you doing? You all oh, right? Oh, everything's copacetic. Okay. And I found it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have an angel too, huh? <laughs> no, no. What do you mean too? I, I don't believe. I don't believe in that stuff. Really? No. You don't believe that there are beings keeping an eye on where we are and what we're doing and know exactly what we're thinking? Yeah, but they're called wives, Dalton. <laughs> So you're telling me that you don't believe in the supernatural? No, I don't, no, no. Nothing, no horoscopes no. or ghosts or Ouija boards or... No. What's that other thing I'm thinking of? The... ESP? That's it, no. yes. No. <laughs> what about the telekinesis, you know, moving things with your mind? Well, now that one, yeah, because one time I saw Buster Hadfield laid on his couch and made his wife move to part asbestos. <laughs> It's time to play the Possum Lodge word game. Yes, sir, and today's prize is an RV. Wow! In this case, RV means Red's van. Hey, wait a minute, you can't give away my van. It's just for a day, Red. Oh. All right, you'll need gas. <laughs> Playing for today's prize is Mike Hammer. Red, you've got 30 seconds to get Mike to say this word. Hurry. Hurry. Yeah, all right, go. <laughs> and go. All right, uh, Mike, somebody's chasing you, so you're in a... Stolen car? <laughs> um, okay, you're in a car. You're going a little faster than you should, and the cops pull you over, and they say, hey, what's the big... Automatic weapon. <laughs> no, let's, not, let's go back to your childhood. Remember, your mom would say, don't eat so fast. There's no... Seconds. <laughs> all right, all right, no, wait. This is an expression, okay? You're in a long, slow line at the bank and it's not moving as fast as it should because the teller's moving kind of slow. So you yell, something up. Stick them. <laughs> Time's almost up, Red. Yeah, all right. Come on, Mike, you gotta do this or you won't win the game. Cheat? No, 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 not cheat, not cheat. No, you, you gotta be quicker or you won't get to drive my van. Well, actually, I'd rather walk. See, I'm kind of in a hurry. There we go. I'm on a break. Great. Give you a couple of minutes to take a look at some of the stuff I brought you for your workspace here. Stuff? You brought stuff? Yeah, you know, just a few mementos from the lodge, you know. Oh, oh, well, it's not like I'm never coming back up to the lodge or anything. You know, you oh, don't right. have to bring stuff down no, to me because this. that's a big picture, isn't it? That's a big one. Eh? Yeah. That yeah, that's a... That's of me and you in yeah. lodge clothing. Lodge clothing, Harold. Up yeah. at the lodge. Yeah, yeah. Surrounded by lodge stuff. Yeah, yeah. Worth a thousand words, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A couple are coming to mind right now. Good. Yeah. You know what the problem is, though? Oh, I do not have a wall to hang this on. Oh. No problem, Harold. Look at this, huh? See? Got a stand on it, huh? Stand right up. Oh, that's. Oh, that's. That's in my staple zone. That's oh. where I do all the stapling. That's that's high business stapling I do there. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's oh. I got an idea. I got an idea. What? What? I know where I know exactly where I could stuff this. <laughs> yeah, into my scanner. You see, and then I'll scan the image. And it'll go into my computer and I'll use it as a screensaver. That's this is where it'll be. Yeah, but Harold, then you'll only be able to see it when you're not working. 
Well, I don't do much work. God, I do so little work. It's scary. <laughs> oh, I, I get it, Harold. You're ashamed of the lodge. That's what it is, isn't it? No. No, 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 no. No, it's just that... No, what it is is that if I look at this picture all day long, I'm going to start daydreaming. I'll be fantasizing about, you know, maybe that fish could swim in Possum Lake, you know. <laughs> Never get any work done. All right. All right. Okay. I see where you're coming yeah. from. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right. I, I, I guess this here is out of the question, is it? <laughs> hey, yes. Yes, it would. Yeah. All right. My wife Bernice tells me it'd be real nice to have heat in the upper level of this shed here. And when you've been married as long as I have, you accept that your wife's decisions are not only final, they're also relentless. <laughs> the bottom line is I got to figure out a way to get this cast iron wood stove up to the second floor. Now, I suppose I could horse the unit up onto my back and then carry it up this ladder here. But that would be the equivalent of putting all my vital organs into a blender. <laughs> Being on a ladder with an extra 150 pounds on my back is the reason middle-aged guys don't elope. <laughs> but an extension ladder is still a big part of my plan. See how it goes up when I pull on this rope here? Remember that. It's a hint. All right, here's another piece of the puzzle. Cross-country skis. Every couple of years, some health freak gives me a pair of these. Cross-country skiing is kind of like downhill, but with the fun removed. I'll tell you, if I start cross-country skiing, it's only a matter of time until I'm eating broccoli and watching the Learning Channel. Oh, darn, they're broken. Well, here's a key component you're gonna need, too. A power winch, eh? Got one of these on the front of your vehicle? I tell you, if I had a nickel for every drainage ditch or sand trap or swimming pool, this thing's pulled me out of those darn lawsuits to take care of themselves. <laughs> All right, these are for pulling stuff out, but it can also be used for pulling stuff up. Can you say forklift? <laughs> All I gotta do is hook the winch here onto the ladder, and when I hit the power, up she goes. Let's give her a go. much easier than carrying the stove up there. <laughs> so remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. out there for a minute. You know, there's an expression, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Okay, in human terms, that means like father, like son. And in most cases, that's a pretty scary thought. <laughs> Especially as you head towards retirement and that inevitable moment when your offspring not only look like you, they start looking after you. <laughs> you don't want them to be like you, believe me. So you gotta start setting a better example right now. Now, I'm not saying you have to quit being that lazy, apathetic guy you've worked so hard to become. <laughs> Just not in front of the kids, or as I call them, your future caregivers. <laughs> you need to come up with a few moments of hard work and responsible behavior, because you want them to be more responsible and you're running out of time. Think about it. You don't want anybody like you making your meals, driving you around, and supervising your medication. <laughs> So you want that apple to fall as far away from the tree as possible. Maybe even roll down a hill. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Good morning, Red. I am going to convince you that there is such a thing as psychic power, and I'm going to do it in front of witnesses. If you could read my mind, Dalton, you wouldn't even try this, you know. <laughs> pick a card, pick a card. Yeah, all right, I'll pick a card. Okay, now stare at it. Yeah. Concentrate. 
Send a mental picture of that card to me. Are you thinking of naked women? <laughs> no. Oh, no, that must be me. Okay. All right. Concentrate on that card. Yeah. Is it the three of clubs? No. It's a four of clubs? No. It's a club, though, right? No. It's a black card, is, is what I meant. It's a, it's a black card. No, it's not. Oh, let me see that. <laughs> oh, well, there it is. <sighs> you know, the trouble is, Red, that you... This isn't working because you don't believe in it. No, 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 no. I don't believe in it because it doesn't work. <laughs> Did you want to see me, Mr. Humphrey? Yeah, Mike, I'm trying to convince Red here of the power of the mind, and I think you can help me, because Moose Thompson said that you believe in angels. No, 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 no. Mike believes in angles. No, no. No, I have an angel. He looks out for me. He kind of keeps me out of trouble. Well, there you go. You see, that's what I mean. Yeah, he lives up back in my place. Yeah, okay, Mike, let's... <laughs> let's not go too far. <laughs> okay, Mike, yes, there's a... an angel lives behind your house? Yes, sir. <laughs> Does he have wings? Yep. Uh, Mike, you see, <laughs> boy, I know what you're trying to do, but you know, let's uh, let's think about what we're saying here. You know. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I'm <laughs> I'm almost convinced. You, you know what? Would, you know what would make it work, right, though? If you could bring that angel over where I could meet him, hey, that would be the clincher. Oh eh? no, sorry, oh. no, no. Um, you see, he's real shy. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's a shame because we were so close to a breakthrough here. <laughs> well, maybe I can convince him to come down to the lodge meeting tonight if you're that convinced you want to meet him. <laughs> Oh, that would be that would be great. You know, I'm not a betting man, but I'd be willing to put up, say, ten bucks that says Mike can't get his angel to show up at the lodge meeting. All right, Mr. Green, I'll take that bet <laughs> on one condition: that you make the same bet with Mr. Humphrey, and that way, when I bring my angel in, you'll have to pay us each ten bucks. Oh no, that's okay, Mike. No. <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Humphrey, you deserve it because you stuck by me when Mr. Green wouldn't, and I think that you deserve that opportunity to make some easy cash. Yeah, I do too, though. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Let's see your money. Uh, can you lend me 10 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Red Gray, this is amazing. I was just thinking about you. Well, I waved at you before I come up here, Gordon. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so what brings you here? Well, you gave me a roll of film to get developed. Well, yeah, but that was only about 20 minutes ago. That was last month, Gordon. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> you want these pictures or not? Oh, yeah, great. Thanks. All right. Did you look at them? No, I was afraid to. <laughs> oh, yeah, these are great. Oh, boy. Oops. What's that by the tree there, Gordon? Is that a bear? What is that? No, no, that's one of those uh, tall, hairy men. The, uh, 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 oh, you mean Bigfoot? Uh, no, no big feet, actually. Both of them. <laughs> you. Oh. Yeah, I just trampled a new flower bed I made. Crazy rascal. Well, how do you know it's a he and not a she, Gordon? Yeah, there's a better picture there. Oh, yeah, that's a he. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I call him Fuzzy, but his real name is... You know, Gord, uh, these pictures could be worth a lot of money, you know. Nah, nah, Fuzzy doesn't have any money. Oh, no, no. I mean, CNN, they pay money for these because you've got proof that the abominable snowman exists. Now, you know, I wouldn't call him abominable. He's more, um, tough but fair. No, 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 Gord. I'm saying, I'm saying, if you could let me take these pictures, okay, and I'll present them to the right people, and uh, we would be looking at a fair major amount of coin to share. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if we do that, I think I should be the one that does all the talking, you know, because I'm a professional forest ranger, just to maintain credibility in the whole thing. Uh, these pictures aren't that good. <laughs> no. Well, can you believe this? Mike had a date. I, I can't remember. My mind would just is agog. And, uh, and he's having a good time driving along, and I guess this girl didn't know him. And uh, suddenly he starts to run out of gas. <laughs> and so did the car. And, uh, you know, and now he has to do what all men hate to do. No, not that. Uh, he had to look at the gas cage. Yeah, she looks a little dry there. <laughs> well, that's something. But look at this. This girl knows Mike. <laughs> Now, uh, now he, he comes up to his next obstacle. Uh, this car technically isn't a car he's had more than five minutes, so he doesn't know where the gas filler 
is on it. This is kind of a tip-off. So try the other side there, Mike. You know, and, you know, I think it's behind the license plate. Try the license plate there. And I don't No, I doubt if it would be. A, I doubt it. I doubt it if it would be any sun. What? <laughs> Okay, okay, see where he, this is a this is a spe, this is the magnetic hill of the Possum Lake area. I don't think Mike's familiar with that. Uh, I don't think we had that and, and he's all all yeah, I know. Look at no it's no Mike, it's an optical illusion. It's a magnetic hill. No, it's just a no it's you know it, it, it looks like it's it look but it watch, watch, there's nothing to it. See, it's just an optical illusion. See? Watch, see? That's it. That's all there is to it. It's just that and you know, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. You can have a lot of fun. Come on, come on. First of all, we don't want the possum van to go up there. Get a, get a, get a little rock there. Stick that in front of the wheels. We can, so now we can, okay, now we got nothing to worry about. All right, now we can have some fun. Come on, come on, right here. I'm thinking, boy, oh boy. Anything I got that I want to roll up that hill, it is. How about a speed watch? Try the spare. Try the spare. Come on, try it, Mike. Come on. This, is, this is great. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. <laughs> ah, isn't that great? There she goes. There we go. <laughs> what else I got in here? I got this. Of those big balls. You want those beach, beach ball type thing? Let's try a few of those. Let's put a few in there. Got a few in. Watch this, Mike. Hey, let them go. Let them go. I got three of them. Let her rip. Let her go. <laughs> Look at this. There goes one. There goes two. And number three. <laughs> oh my golly, you know? All right, Mike. Hey, Mike, Mike. Let's do the big one, eh? Let's do the big one, eh? Let's fire the whole van up there. Come on. Come on. You get yours. Get the other rock. Get the other rock. Take the rock out. Get the other rock. Watch out, though. Watch out. She'll creep on you. She'll creep. She'll creep. Get away. Get away. Get away. Back away. Get away. Get, get around. Get around. Okay. 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 I'll get mine. I'll get mine. Stand back. Okay. Here she goes. Stand back. Here she goes. Watch this. Watch this. Here she goes. Here she goes. Here she goes. Here she goes. Time for Mike's Teen Talk. <clears throat> okay, so um, I know a lot of you young people have uh, trouble telling the truth. Well, the problem is that the truth isn't always that simple because what might be true for one guy, like say you or me, might not be true for some other guys, like the police. Right? <laughs> um, I mean, and also you might be uh, so busy making up your story and rehearsing it for so long and working and working on it that you think it's really the truth, right? And it comes as a complete shock when some eyewitness uh, tells you you're lying, right? <laughs> this happens to me a lot. So I like to look for the danger signs that'll show me if I might be telling the truth. Like, if my story is gonna cause a hassle, or if it's gonna get people irritated, or, and here's the, here's the big giveaway, if it seems a lot more unlikely than the lie I was gonna tell, then it's probably the truth. <laughs> so I'd say that if you wanna get yourself into a lot of trouble and have people mad at you and uh, calling you a liar and all that kind of stuff, then sure, tell the truth. Otherwise, I just sort of use the truth as a last resort, right? <laughs> like they do in politics. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> Uh, what do you learn in the school these days, Dale? Well, my economics class is kind of interesting. We're uh, doing a comparison between guns and butter. Oh, yeah, is that what the educational system has come to now? You gotta go to college to be able to tell guns from butter? Well, you could learn about it too, Mr. Green. I mean, they've got adult classes at night if you're interested. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not interested. I'm just trying to distract you so you put more gas in than the five bucks I'm paying for. <laughs> That'll be five dollars, Mr. Green. There you go, Dale. <laughs> See you next time. Oh, wait a second. You forgot your coupons. What? It's a promotion we're doing here at the station. It's like money, but you gotta spend it here. So how much are these coupons worth? A quarter of a tank of gas or something? Uh, nine cents. Nine cents? <laughs> well, you collect them. It adds up. Well, can you give me an elastic band and I can keep them together at least? Well, I don't have an elastic on me. The convenience store sells elastics. You gotta buy them a bag at a time, though. How much does a bag of elastics cost? I don't know, two bucks? Dale, I'm not gonna spend two bucks to hold nine cents together. Here, you take them back. Uh, no, I can't oh. take them. I hope you don't think I'm gonna get out of the van to pick those up. I don't bend over to pick up a dime. And neither should you, Dale. What are you making here? Eight bucks an hour? Okay, that's 13 cents a minute. You take the time to pick up those coupons, you're losing money. There's your economics. And drop by the lodge, bring a baked potato, and I'll also show you the difference between guns and butter. <laughs> Oh, my 
Mark's running a bit late if he's coming at all. You don't suppose his angel whisked him off to heaven, do you? <laughs> Mike can get into heaven. That's good news for all of us, isn't it? <laughs> well, I got things to do, Dalton, so if you don't mind, I'll just kind of... All the right there, Mr. Green. That money isn't yours yet. Uh, Mike, Mike, did you come alone, or is there an invisible spirit kind of hovering around you? Probably some on his breath. <laughs> no. No, it took a lot of coaxing, but my angel finally agreed to drop by. So, uh, you don't mind handing over the money? For what? Some invisible angel nobody can see or hear? Hey, angel, if you're here, smite me, huh? <laughs> smite me down, smite me good, huh? Good <laughs> 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 morning, Franco. Uh, this is Franco. Uh, he's, uh, he's a volunteer with the Possum Lake Guardian Angel Society. They help guys like me. Nice to meet you, Franco. I look after Mike. Don't want anything to mess up his parole. Uh, this is Mr. Green. Uh, he wanted you to smite him. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. What do you got in the takeout food box? My wings. <laughs> I think somebody owes Mr. Humphrey and me 10 bucks. Hey, hey, hey. For what? This guy isn't technically an angel. What? What did you say? I guess those are suicide wings. <laughs> well, meeting time. You guys gotta go. You guys gotta go. Where you go? Oh, yeah, right. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> so, uh, my wife is watching. I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I think I'm gonna need a change of clothes because I've just been touched by an angel. <laughs> and for the rest of you, Thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and my best pal, Franco, thanks for watching and keep your stick on the ice. Come on now. Take a seat, please. Everybody sit. Sit down, everyone. OK, everyone sit. Sit. Sit down. All rise. All rise. Bondo on the Blancas I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess.